Good evening, everyone. I am your host and instructor, Lainey Shaughnessy, and welcome to Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. Spindle TV is brought to you by Digital Woodcarver, inspiring your creativity and providing you with the tools to create your own unique masterpieces. Hello, hello, and welcome. Welcome, everybody. Oh, I got some dust on my hat. How are y'all doing tonight? I'm glad y'all could join me on this Tuesday evening. I said that our class was going to be Monday, yesterday evening, and that, of course, didn't happen. Uh, I got so buried under with uh, office work and writing a new manual and stuff, and... Um, Working on that and then working with uh, Digital Woodcarver customers, I got so tied up yesterday I could not uh, get to the class yesterday evening, um, so I had to push it back to tonight. So I thank you all for taking time out of your schedule this evening to join me, and I greatly appreciate that uh, and everything. And um, uh, welcome Doug from Seattle and Sam Engel and. Uh, Sylvia and David and Alan and Alan again, Alan Lee, uh, Peter, Roger, Kevin, everybody that is joining me. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule this evening. Um, now, last week when we were working in uh, class and everything, I had someone ask me about, we were talking a little bit about a model, and I had someone ask me about uh, wrapping a model. Uh, and so that led me into tonight's class, which is wrapping, you know, just a rotary job in general. Uh, we're going to look at wrapping, you know, 2D designs or 2.5D designs, uh, looking at wrapping 3D models and stuff. But we're just going to look at the wrapping process uh, in general and things. And um, uh, that's what we're going to cover uh, to uh, see if we can kind of uh, explain the process a little bit uh, better and all. And I had a wonderful visual... And uh, unfortunately, I don't know, uh, I had a wonderful visual that I wanted to share with you. And before class, I said, okay, let me break out that visual that I created a while back ago that kind of explains the wrapping process a bit uh, and, and uh, how you know we calculate it and stuff. And I'll be darned if I can find that, uh, that file. <laughs> so um, unfortunately... I don't have it, so I'm going to have to try to recreate it, uh, re re recreate that uh, uh, that visual in a way to give it just a little bit of an explanation. Um, we're going to give it just a couple of minutes, a little early, it's 7.13, we're going to give it just a couple of minutes and let everybody kind of get in, and then we're going to jump in and get started. Uh, so grab your cup of coffee and everything else that you may need to get started, and... Um, We'll uh, we'll get this ball rolling. Dun, dun, dun. All right, let's see here. Let me pull up a couple of things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll get started here. All right, I've got my juice. Still got a bit of a head cold, so if I sound um, uh, nasally, forgive me. Uh, just a little bit of a head cold still um, lingering and going on, but uh, we're going to do our best to get past that. And uh, and all that wonderful jazz. Let's see if we can uh, move along. Uh, let's see here. All right, all right. Let's see. Commercial indie. I believe we are just about good to go. 7.15 it is. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So let's go ahead and uh, 
without um, further ado, let's jump on in and uh, see what we can come up with. All right, let me minimize this. Let me get over to our um, main screen. There we go. And let's go ahead and let's get, uh, I'm gonna start off with VCar Pro. So let's get VCar Pro open and everything. And then we're gonna, we'll move into Aspire. Uh, not much difference when it comes to wrapping. You can wrap models in uh, Desktop Pro or Aspire. Oh, hiccups, sorry about that. All right. Wonderful. All right, so, you know, as of, uh, you know, Windows 9, uh, let's call it 9.5. I think it was 9.5 when the rotary option was introduced into the main job setup window. Now, uh, users that are using, you know, 7, 7.5, 8, 8.5, and even into 9, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the wrap job setup was done within the gadgets it was an actual gadget uh, under gadgets wrapping and because of that uh, desktop users couldn't really do a wrap job setup because uh, they didn't have access to the gadget library and um, the uh, 9.5 came out and um, it put the wrapping gadget, the rotary gadget, inside of the job setup, which now gives us the ability to set up that wrap job. And the uh, uh, now with that, you know, a lot of users, uh, desktop pro and, and and Aspire users, are able to do it. Now, generally with a rotary job, we have to provide the job setup with the length of our spindle, the length of our spindle. Uh, and then the diameter, uh, and you know we could be starting off with a, you know a square block, uh, and it's gonna you know we can go through our rounding tool path and stuff to uh, knock off those corners and get that part to round, and then create our part from there. Uh, but what it's looking for is it's looking for the diameter of the round, uh, and. What happens is whether you're using the older Vetric where you're doing the wrap job, wrap job setup or you're using the newer Vetric which uses the rotary within the job setup, um, it uh, basically takes that diameter and it unwraps it into a flat plane which basically is the circumference. If I took a string and wrapped it around that uh, cylinder and then I pulled that string out tight, that length of that string would be the circumference of that cylinder. And we can find that circumference by multiplying a part by pi, uh, 3.141 to infinity, but generally 3.141. Uh, and then, uh, or we could use the shortcut codes within the Vetric software, which is the letter P. Uh, you know, um, which is the multiplication. Basically, if I had a three inch diameter times P, not not the number eight, let's try the multiply sign, times P and I hit equals, that would give me the circumference. 9.424 uh, would be the circumference of that three inch diameter circle. But the software does all that for us. We don't need to do that. We just have to type in the diameter. That's all it asks for. It does all the math for us in the job setups, and that's that applies for both if it's a gadget, you know, for the older software and for the new one. So we just have to type in the diameter. Now, um, the uh, so I'm gonna work with a five inch diameter uh, by let's go with a 20 inch length cylinder, and uh, we'll go from there. Now, generally, generally on the center of that cylinder. Uh, we zero is the center and so imagine if I take that cylinder and I unwrap it into a flat plane that center becomes the bottom right so it's technically working off the bottom of the material and stuff which I'm used to and everything but uh, when um, uh, within the job setups it doesn't say machine bot bed or it doesn't say bottom of material it doesn't say 
you know, uh, surface of material. It says cylinder surface or cylinder axis. Okay. And that means we could either work off the surface of the finished cylinder, you know, our finished diameter, or we can work off the center of the axis. Now, I am a big advocate, uh, especially all digital woodcarver customers, you guys and girls, you work off the center of your cylinder. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, I'm a big advocate of that. But where the surface of the cylinder for our guys and girls would, would apply from is if they were using our digital laser on the fourth axis. Um, if they were using the digital laser, then they, that laser would be a certain distance from the surface of that cylinder. So they would use that option, uh, you know, if they were using something like the digital laser. But we are, let's say we're making a table leg, a spindle, uh, a statue, whatever the case may be, we're gonna work off the center of the cylinder. So that's gonna be our axis of our cylinder. And that's gonna be our option. Now, on our rotary fourth axis, we have the motor side, we have the tailstock side, just like a lathe. You've got your motor side and your tailstock side. The motor side is the, uh, you know, edge, uh, the left edge of my workpiece over here. And we work from the bottom left corner. And so that would mean if I have a square blank, and I don't have a, let me see if I got something that even resembles a square blank, blah, 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 blah. Okay, this is a bad example, ladies and gentlemen. Here, this is a smaller example. Dun, dun, dun. This is a terrible example, but hey, all right, so look at the camera. So we imagine my clamp here. Let me take my bolt out so it doesn't look like a clamp. We're going to pretend that it's a cylinder. Imagine I am starting with a square blank, right? Square blank on all four sides. It's usually, you know, all the same diameter, two inch by two inch, four inch by four inch in my case you know, five inch by five inch, whatever the case may be. Well, when we, if we were to unwrap that uh, square blank into a flat plane, which is what our plane is, the seam, the seam where the two halves come together, that's our bottom, you know, that's our, that's our center line basically. And so imagine if the top half of my whiteboard here was one seam and the bottom half was the other. When they come together, when they're wrapping around this square blank, that's the flat, right? A lot of people think that they're zeroing out their XY on one of the corners, you know, of this blank, and they're not. They are zeroing out on the flat, um, you know, when it unwraps and stuff. And let's illustrate that. So I'm gonna. Uh, I'm working off the bottom left corner is our XY datum, and I'm going to be rotating my Y axis is revolving around the X axis. The X axis is the link that router traveling back and forth along that spindle, but the rotary, the wrap is going to be around that X axis. So I want to do, you know, that wrap is happening along the X axis. If your X axis um, if your if your CNC machine has a rotary axis and you have it clamped on the bed, uh, and let's say it's clamped along the Y axis, and your X is wrapping around it, you know that would be you know wrapping along the Y. But for digital woodcarver customers, we are wrapping along the X axis. So uh, it, you would just the setup would be according to how your fourth axis you know mounts to your particular CNC machine. Now, the um, the uh, resolution I'm working with very high. Now this flip along here, uh, this flip design is basically the seam is in the back of the, uh, the spindle. You can't see the seam at all. And flipping the design means that you want the design to be wrapped towards the front and stuff uh, or towards the back. So I'm, I, I always keep it checked as a default. Uh, it, uh, it, it flips the design so that it wraps properly with the seam in the back of the spindle. If that makes any sense, but that's what it means. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And let's get in our job setup here. And one of the uh, things is, is let me draw 
a five inch, five, five, five. You draw a five inch by five inch rectangle here. And imagine that this is a end view, right? We're looking at the end of, of my cylinder and stuff. And let's imagine that on my fourth axis, see our fourth axis on digital woodcarver units, it rotates sideways, right? So it's coming in from the side. Uh, the You guys and girls with your CNC's that have your uh, uh, fourth axis mounted to your bed at the table, your router would be coming down from the top, you know? And either way, I'm gonna let's look at it from a side view uh, just for illustration purposes only, but you know, it comes in from the side. And so when we are zeroed out, we are all the way towards the left end of that cylinder. Uh, and we, we're either right at the end of it or we're in a little bit from the edge, just wherever you want you, you know, your X to be and stuff. But the router is uh, when it's positioned in the center of that stock, think of like a lathe, when it is positioned to the, oops, hold on a second, let me grab that first and then that. Work with me there, Junior. Hold the shift key, not the control key, Laney. There we go. Uh, when it's centered on that cylinder and stuff, it's all the way to the edge and basically the center of that bit is right on that seam so imagine if I come in here on my square and I'm gonna take and go into node editing on my square and I'm gonna cut that uh, vector right there and I'm gonna take um, this vector here and I'm gonna start kind of unwrapping it a little bit so I'm gonna cut it there I'm gonna cut it on all four corners. Bear with me a second. This is really the only way I can kind of uh, generalize this unwrapping. <laughs> if you can, if you'll bear with me a second, uh, cut the vector. If I was in Aspire, it'd be easier to do. There's an actual button that says unwrap vector, and it would unwrap it. But um, the corners and everything. Imagine if I take this guy here. And here, let's switch over just for a minute. It's gonna be a little easier to illustrate if I switch over to uh, Vetric for a minute. Imagine if I take this rectangle here and I unwrap it and everything, which I have a button here which unwraps a, a vector for me. Uh, if, I, if I were to unwrap that, uh, it then creates this vector here. And let's uh, move my little circle out of the way. And so let's move this back over here. And I'm gonna rotate this two directions. So these are my four corners right here. One, two, three, and four. And the U shape, that loop right here, uh, is the flat. So this is a flat this is a flat, this is a flat, and then this is half of a flat, and then the other half is over here, my two ends where my seam is. So imagine if you have that square and you unwrap it, in this case it's what it's doing, all your corners are kind of you know now facing up, and then you have these flats that are getting curled, you know, that are getting curled to create this kind of shape here. Well, that x, y, zero is that bottom part of that seam. You know, that's why we zero out on the flat, not on one of the corners, because we wouldn't be, if we were zeroing out on one of the corners, if we had this piece rotated 45 degrees and we had our bit centered out on one of the corners, we're not at Y zero in our case, or X zero if your CNC wraps along the Y axis. We're kind of more, we're more like, you know, uh, a few inches in, you know, from the bottom and stuff. So I don't know if that makes sense to you. I just want you to understand how, you know, the, uh, you know, the, 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 the vectors kind of get unwrapped and stuff. But what the most important is, is from this center point all the way around to the other center point, we have a circumference. We have a cylinder in here. So if I were to take a cylinder and let's go with a uh, five inch 
diameter cylinder and if I were to find my center center of that cylinder we have a five inch by five inch cylinder within that rectangle and that wrapping that string around that cylinder gives us our circumference and all and so um, that is our up and down on our screen so from the top of our white space to the bottom of our white space is the circumference of that five inch block so we are drawing within a flat plane that's the whole point of the whole point of this is is we are drawing on a flat screen in a flat plane and our round stock has just gotten flattened out so now whatever object that we put on the work surface let's make this uh, 1.5 inches tall whatever we put on our work surface and let me take this also and hold down my control key and drag a copy down and I'm going to rotate this 45 degrees you know the software is basically that's our y-axis that you know as I as I carve this imagine that cylinder turning and so it's wrapping that hello world around that cylinder on this diagonal one it's wrapping it in that diagonal sweep around but on the hello world that's going vertical it's basically just curling the text so it's on the half of that cylinder so imagine if this was my cylinder it's just basically taking that text uh, that hello world the h the e and everything and it's kind of wrapping it uh slightly over that cylinder because i'm on the center of my cylinder basically or not i'm not quite center let me get centered here um there we go so that would be right on that curve and stuff but my diagonal hello world is getting wrapped uh, around that piece so let's come over here and let's create our tool pass you know uh, I'm gonna take and I'll, I'll create both of them uh, it's gonna be a V carved tool path nothing's you know nothing's different six zero start depth uh, no flat depth in this case I'm just gonna let it V carve straight through when I calculate this tool path when it brings me into my preview it's you know it's already showing me my wrapped cylinder now for you guys and girls that are using the older Vetric software 8 7 8 8.5 and so on and so forth um, your V if you're in vCard Pro then you will not see the actual wood blank there okay you'll not see the wood blank there uh, you in order to view the wrap job you would have to go over to the toolpath or I'm sorry the view menu and you would have to turn off the sh color shaded view um, and then when you were uh, you know oops let me turn on something else here oh blah, 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 blah. I don't think I I don't think it let's see here yeah I see in 9 9.5 it won't let me show you what you would see in the um, in the uh, wrap view but you would see the tool path wrapping around you wouldn't see this block of wood here uh, and stuff uh, but in 9.5 uh, Vetric and Aspire uh, you do see the color block now the color block or the block of wood the wrapped block you can see in a spire uh, in earlier versions and everything let this uh, hello world regenerate uh, it when it's in wrap view it takes a second for it to uh, generate to where it clears up come on guys clear up you're getting all pixelated give it a second give it a moment come on let's do that again let's preview that hello world 
Wow. Every time I move my mouse, I end up pixelating it. Sorry about that, guys and girls. There we go. All right, so as you can tell, the Hello World that was vertical along the center of my piece, all it's doing is just curving that text. It's curving that text. So it, it, it basically, it's wrapping that cylinder. You know, it's like uh, taking a piece of paper and wrapping it around. Uh, on my diagonal Hello World, it's actually wrapping that. So that rotary is turning as it's carving. Uh, creating that wrapped that wrapped look now the thing of it is 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 it's not just 2d items that we can wrap and stuff we can also wrap 3d objects now one of the main things that we have to be aware of is the size of our cylinder and the thickness of our models and things like that when we're when we're wrapping that model because we are doing a road kind of wrap job now this is basically when we're talking models and stuff where we're basically wrapping that model uh, and uh, whatever orientation that model is whether it's 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 let's go let's unwrap this for a second you know if that model is running along my y-axis here and you know the head of the models up here the bottom of the models down here at the bottom well it's gonna wrap around that direction do I want do I want to do that or do I want the model to be rotated 90 degrees to where the sides are wrapping around that cylinder? You know, if I had a, a, a post with an eagle on it and the wings were what's wrapping around that cylinder, you know, we got to figure out our orientation and stuff. Um, you know, because in this case, my X axis is left to right, uh, you know, and my Y axis is getting wrapped into that cylinder. You know, it's getting wrapped around. And if I turn this piece, if I rotate and turn this piece, um, you know, and keep turning and rotating and rotating and rotating and everything, we'll get to the, uh, actually, they do a pretty good job at hiding the seam. Let me back up a little bit. Where's my seam at? Yeah, they actually have improved a lot on the seam and everything. It used to be pretty visible. But our seam is on the back side here. Uh, and right there it is. You can see by the grain. I don't know if you can see by the grain here how the grain is a little off right there. There's my seam line on the back of Zillner. So it used to be in the front. Like when you're in, in your older version of your software, if you had a spire and everything, when it wrapped the model, it wrapped forward and the seam was always right down the middle of the design and stuff. Uh, in this, uh, they've now put the seam in the backside, which is pretty cool. That was kind of a new fix with 9.5 and stuff and all. So when we are working on our unwrapped work area, you know, what we're putting in there and where we're putting it and how we're doing it all that just, you know, it, that's up to you. Now, if we go into the gadgets and into the wrapping, we still have some options. We still have a fluting layout. We still have a spiral layout. Uh, and then we also have the rounding toolpath. We've got to create that rounding toolpath to round things off. Now, if we look at the uh, fluting layout, and our fluting wizard comes up, basically this is like cutting flutes evenly spaced around that cylinder. And so let's say I wanted four flutes. I wanted an offset from the end of uh, one and a half inches and we'll go one and a half inches on the other end. And then let's say at the beginning I wanted to create a cove at the start and a cove at the end. When I click OK, it's going to generate my vectors. So these two lines here are my coves on each end. And then my four flutes are these vectors here. So all I would do at that point is I would, you know, create my fluting toolpath. And, um, you know, uh, let's see here. Let's go, 
Actually, profile toolpath. Why why do a fluting? Uh, that's not really the application. We want to do a profile toolpath. Uh, I'm going to go point two five, and I'm going to use a box core bit, and I believe I believe that I have a box core bit in my arsenal of tools. Let's see here. I do. We'll use the 9 16 cents box core bit there. And, you know, with that tool, uh, I want to be on the line. And when I calculate this tool path, let's reset this preview. If we unwrap this and I were to preview that tool path, I would have my two coves. Let's wrap it back up, and that's going to be the two coves at the end of my cylinder. Okay, let's unwrap that. Uh, now let's come in here and let's grab our four flutes, and that's also going to be a profile toolpath. And um, I'm going to go a quarter of an inch deep, same on the line. We're going to calculate those vectors, preview that selected toolpath, and that would be our coves. And if I wrap this up, the wrapping icon, by the way, is in the view tab up at the top and you can turn it on and off here so you know I have my four flutes um, you know wrapping around uh, the cylinder and bleeding into this cove now I could use uh, the um, where the cuts do not bleed into the coves on the end I could use a a uh, little bit of a deeper cut here on the ends uh, where you see these little nicks uh, here in the side where the tip is just right into that cove there. I could give myself a little bit more of a depth of cut. Let's go 0.27 on that and calculate that out and uh, preview that. Kind of, whew, everything is just like flying all over the place. Um, you know, I could clean that up, you know, so I have just a nice transition. Uh, I probably could use the fluting toolpath. The fluting toolpath, uh, basically, let's go into the fluting toolpath and let's see what we're dealing with here. On the fluting toolpath, I can do a uh, ramp at the start. See, I, I don't really want to do a ramp at the start. Um, let's do a ramp at the start and end. And uh, mm, let's use our box core bit. I don't think it's going to look right as a profile toolpath would, but hey, we won't know until we try. Let's do that and calculate that toolpath. Let's reset that preview. Yeah, I can tell already by the toolpath. If you look at the toolpath, you see what it's doing? It's it's the improper, that's not the correct toolpath. It's actually getting deeper and deeper, you know, as it goes around. And I do not want that. I want my normal flutes and everything around my parts and stuff. So I want it to be a profile toolpath. So I'm gonna delete that. I don't even wanna show it. Uh, it's not a fluting toolpath when we're working on our cylinder and stuff, when we're wrapping around, because this is uh, rotating and revolving and everything and we're just bringing that bit in as that part rotates and stuff to uh, create those flutes to whatever depth that we need alrighty Aphrodite now on the horizontal we got those so that would be our fluting and now let's take a look at our let's take a look at a spiral toolpath. The spiral toolpath it used to throw me. Uh, let's go ahead and delete. Let's go back into our flat plane here. The spiral toolpath used to throw me when I first did it um, because it would all the lines are are imagine the lines are wrapping around in a spiral. So the lines were always shooting off into no man's land. And I'll give you an example here. Let's do a spiral toolpath. And let's say I want on my strands, I want a number of uh, four strands. We'll do, we'll stick with four. 
a uh, number of strands. And uh, I want a space space between those strands. I'm going to go with a spacing of, uh, let's go, if I'm using my 9 16 inch bit, let's go, mm, let's go one inch spacing in between. Uh, I'm going to, yeah, we'll have it start and stop. We'll go, we'll go one inch from the end, from each of the ends. And then, uh, I'm going to do a right hand twist uh, and uh, no coves. I'm not going to do any coves at the start of the beginning. So let's click on that. And it's going to tell us the number of revolutions uh, for the spiral. And so it's wrapping around 4.34 times, you know. So if we click OK here, uh, if we look very closely, you'll see that the strands are off the board. They're down here. Uh, because those strands, imagine them in space coming and wrapping around this part in a diagonal angle all the way around 4.35 times. Um, these are our strands here. And so they're wrapping, they're starting at this edge here, offset that one inch apart, and they're wrapping in a diagonal all the way around. So when I create this toolpath, when I create this profile toolpath, and I'll stick with the uh, same box core bit and everything, and I'm only going to carve, uh, let's go um, an eighth of an inch. <coughs> Excuse me, a little bit of a cold there, sorry. Laney, learn how to type in an eighth of an inch, and we'll be good. Uh, on the lines, when I calculate this toolpath, if we reset this back to a blank board, you'll see that my strands are down here, okay, because I'm in a flat view. But if I were to wrap them, you can see those strands are wrapping around that cylinder 4.34 times. You know, it's wrapping around and around and around with that spacing in between. And let's see if I can look at this down the X view here and tilt this a bit. So though, yeah, no, that's probably not a good view. Let's uh, let's go with the Z view. There we go. Uh, so those strands are wrapping around. That long string is wrapping around. But when we unwrap it, when we unwrap it, you know they're they're coming down here. And that always used to throw me off. Is like, wait a minute, what what's going on there? And I it took me a while. It really took me a while to wrap my head around what was going on. You know, it's just it's it's taking that string and wrapping it around that cylinder. Uh, from its start point. If I tape the start point of that string at the end of the board and I wrap that string around diagonally, I could understand what it is, you know, when it's in the wrap view. But when I'm, uh, when I unwrap it and everything, that string is down here, you know, that string is, is down here. So it's the same, same kind of concept. Now, while you're, why, why you are seeing multiple lines and multiple red and blue lines and everything is uh, you know on our individual flutes there is because the toolpath is actually taking two passes, uh, two passes, and that's the two blue lines, and then it's got to retract on those two passes twice, and that's the red lines. So if I change this to a single pass, which uh, you know I wouldn't do, uh, and I recalculated this, it'll make the view just a little bit more cleanly for you. You can see the four flutes overlapping each other. All right, so let's preview this cut. Okay. And so I have a total of, you know, on my strands here, I have my one, two, three, four strands wrapping around and around and around. So you see all these lines, you're like, wow, that's four lines? But imagine this line starting here, wrapping around to here, wrapping around, gotta skip three, to here, wrapping around to here, you know, skipping every three, <coughs> every four, should I say. And so that's what you're seeing. You're seeing these four strands wrapping around. Um, if I, if I, let's make this view a little bit cleaner for you so the concept is understandable. Let's go into that spiral toolpath and let's do one strand, one strand, 
and click OK. And let's uh, recalculate this toolpath. and reset this preview and wait a minute wait a minute did I do one strand uh, one strand uh, space between the strands let's uh, let's go uh, this is a 20 inch cylinder so let's go five inches and click OK Okay, so this strand is going to be wrapping around and around and around. It's spaced out five inches apart. And so let's recalculate this toolpath and preview. Why are you doing that, you son of a gun? Give me a second, guys. Give me a second, guys. I got all, I'm clicking on the, I had the wrong vector selected, guys. All right, let's preview that. Let's create that profile tool. I kept selecting the same vector. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, let's calculate that out. There we go, George. Bye, George, I'm getting it now. So that one strand is starting down here at the bottom and it's coming around and wrapping, coming around and wrapping, coming around and wrapping, coming around and wrapping with a space of five inches between each spiral wrap, you know. Now when I wrap this up, you can see that one continuous strand starting and wrapping continuously. Let me see if I can get into a Z view here and let it uh, regenerate there. And so it's starting and it's wrapping around and around and around uh, that part um, to create that one solid spiral all the way around with a space of five inches between each wrap. Okay. Hope I didn't lose you there. But I, the reason why you were seeing me have a little bit of complication a moment ago is when I was in the 2D view, I kept selecting the wrong vector. Because uh, I had created three different spiral vector sets of vectors, but I never changed over to the vector when I calculated the toolpath. So, sorry about that. That was on me. Um, there you go, Sam. 3.14159. I just now getting a chance to look over the comments. Let's look and see what we got over here in the comments and all. Uh, we've got, um, good evening, everyone. Hello, and how do we handle tapered spindles such as a table leg? All right, that's a great question from Mike Smith. Uh, how do we handle table spindles? Well, that is going to be a spire, Mike. So you're going to be in a spire, and you're going to have to draw that profile for that taper. Okay. You won't be able to do. Uh, you won't be able to create really a tapered spindle uh, in the uh, V carve. Uh, pro and desktop and everything. These are more cylindrical sound. Uh, you know, it could be models. It could be things like, you know, you could carve a round eagle. You could carve all these things. But as far as a tapered leg, a tapered leg and all, that is a spire. So in a spire, you would draw out the profile and you would sweep that profile between two drive rails. So let me turn my model off here. We have two drive rails and I have a tapered profile of this leg is getting tapered down for this ball and this tapered leg is getting swept using the two rail sweep tool. It's getting swept between those two drive rails. So I would select this drive rail here, select this drive rail there and make that my drive rails and then I would select my profile and I would sweep that between the spans to create that tapered model there. And let's unwrap this to create that tapered model. 
you know, that tapered leg and everything uh, to create that taper. Now that I have that model, now that I have that model, I can put, if I wanted for some odd reason to put text on my tapered leg or a 3D model, let's go ahead and let's do a 3D model. I'm gonna grab some clip art and I'm gonna grab uh, some plants and fruit. And let's grab some, I think I have a grapevine here somewhere. Let's grab some grapes. And let's uh, rotate these bad boys around. Let's put one there. And let's mirror this, make a mirror copy and flip that down. Let me get these sized. And centered. Now those grapes and everything, let this regenerate. Those grapes and all will follow the taper of that model. So I can come in here and create the taper of that model. Let those grapes and all regenerate. There we go. And so they will follow that taper of that model. So if it was text, if it was a 2D carving, if it was flutes, if it was, you know, whatever the case may be, um, it's going to follow, it's going to project onto that model. Um, and we wouldn't, you know, if I were doing uh, fluting on this, let's say I wanted to do some decorative fluting. Let's get rid of the grapes. Uh, and let's say... Uh, let's go here and let's take this guy and let's offset him inward and let's go three inches apart. Let's go outward three inches apart. We'll do four. Loops. Uh, let's not do that fourth one. Let's just do those three. We'll do three sides. Here, let's do this. Uh, let's undo that, undo that. Let's go two inches apart. Two inches apart. There we go. There we go. All right, now I'm going to take these guys here and uh, I'm going to center them on my material. And if I come over and created the uh, profile toolpath on those, uh, it's letting me know that my material is ex my material thickness and my model thickness is exceeding my um, my material thickness here, and all. So let me get things set up because I have an error. I have an error. 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 Go into my model, my modeling tab. Work with me, Junior. Work with me. My component turned on there. And this needs to be needs to be what's my math here? Let's go two point two five, click apply. still three and a half divided by two bear with me a second second guys three and a half divided by two is one, uh, one more. there we go
There we go. My model was too thick for my three and a quarter inch diameter there, my three and a quarter inch diameter. But uh, on my profile toolpath, I'm gonna go with a quarter inch deep cut. Uh, I'm gonna use uh, my ball nose bit. Uh, let me see, I should have a box core bit in this tool database. Let me see if I do new. Do I have a box core bit? One of these days I'll update all my tool paths, all my tool dialogues from Aspire to uh, Pro and get them all the same. Um, let's go with a quarter inch ball nose. That'll be fine for this demonstration. And on the line, now I need to project, down here at the bottom, I need to project that cut onto the 3D model so it will follow the taper. So when I follow the taper, and everything. Um, we want that cut to follow the taper of the model. First, before we can, so we can see this uh, cut and everything, this is what my little table leg looks like, uh, my little three and a quarter inch diameter and all. Uh, I want those, uh, you know, following that taper and stuff. Now, I need to create my 3D model um, cut, so bear with me here. Let me create my 3D model toolpath. Let that calculate out real quick while I'm answering questions. Did I freeze up? Ronnie, am I still frozen up? I just saw that, Ronnie. It was probably a, a let me see, it probably had a spike in my, yeah, it should be okay now, right, Ronnie? Yeah, okay now, I see it now. I wouldn't scroll down far enough, Ronnie. But uh, yeah, it was probably a little frozen up there when I was uh, calculating and all. Now, so when, when uh, Mike, long story short, uh, when we handle, ta to handle tapered spindles or odd shaped spindles, maybe I want a bubble in the middle of this, uh, you know, a uh, spindle or a cove or, you know, something, you know, that is creating a profile in order to create that profile for that 3D model that requires the Aspire software. Okay, that requires the Aspire software. While that's calculating out, I'm gonna pop back over to our V carve here and let's get rid of all these tool paths. And on my 20 inch by five inch diameter cylinder, I wanna go ahead and I wanna wrap a model. I wanna bring a model in. Let me get to my clip art here. And uh, let's say that, uh, let's go with our decorative. Decorative. And let's take this guy here. All right, what this warning is saying, this is the first model that you've put into an empty, you know, this is the first model I'm dropped into an empty model. The modeling plane of the job will need to be adjusted to do avoid distortion would you like this to be corrected automatically before continuing? I can do yes or no. I can do it manually or automatically. I'm going to do it automatically. Let him kind of uh, fix that, and I'll show you where that is in the job orientate or the job in the material setup. But uh, let me get this orientated first. I want to rotate this 90 degrees. One more time. There we go. And I'm going to size it up. About like that. Now, as I size up my model, when I scale the model, not only does it scale on the X, Y, but it also scales on the Z. So what that little warning was, my material setup, and let me back up so I can put a little fast in there. My material setup right here in the set button in here 
it's showing me my job setup, my five inch diameter. I'm starting from the bottom left corner, which is one of the flats. Uh, I've got the center of the cylinder is my zero position. And then the model, the model position in the material is, you know, is it inside of the cylinder? No, it's going to be on the outside. So I want it all the way up here. It's going to be on the outside of the cylinder. I want it wrapping around. Now, my model thickness currently is, you know, 0.6588. And I have two inches thick of material. So I have all of this material in the middle, the meat of my cylinder. And then my model is only, you know, 0.65, you know, 0.65. So five eighths of an inch thick, you know, on that outside there. And so I'm not getting any errors, but if my model were thicker, let's say my model was 2.75, which far exceeds my two and a half inch, you know, half diameter, then I'm going to get an error. You know, the model thickness exceeds the material thickness you know we don't want that we can't have that and everything so I'm gonna go back to my uh, 0.65 and some change I don't remember what the change was but we're gonna go back to there and everything and I want my model on the outside of the material so that's that light tan area and now that's what that first warning was saying hey this is the first model most likely you know it was positioned wrong in the material do you want to fix that automatically click yes and by clicking yes it just threw it up and fixed it automatically if i would have said no i would have had to come into my material setup and slide this up automatically or manually manually should i say so we want to be on the outside of our spindle And then now I can create my tool path and, you know, I'm going to have a, you know, a 3D rough, a 3D finish, you know, and all that stuff. So let's do the rough cut first. I'll do a 3D rough cut. This is for the model. Uh, I haven't done a rounding tool path or anything like that, but this is for the model. I'm going to use the material as the boundary. I'm going to calculate this with my quarter inch end mill and hold on a second let's uh, go back into that I don't want an offset I do not want an allowance offset I want that to be zero and I'm gonna hit calculate again okay and so I'm gonna close the preview because I want to show you the actual model itself let's turn off the toolpath and all so this model let, let it regenerate. Come on now. There we go. So this model is wrapping around that cylinder. Let me get this to rotate a bit. That's so wrapping around the cylinder. And everything and I could have it you know I could stretch it out and have the two ends on the back touching each other and all but I mean that's really kind of it's all dependent upon what it is that you're you're wrapping you know are we wrapping text are we wrapping you know just vectors that we've drawn that we're V carving in or are we actually you know are we actually wrapping a 3d model so if I come in here and I you know go into my preview here and I preview this rough cut this rough cut is doing all the hogging away. It's going to do all the hogging away of all of my spindle, my material, and everything. Um, my round spindle, because we're gonna, if we're starting with a square blank, I'll show you how to create a roughing toolpath or a rounding toolpath. Let me use the proper term there. Uh, but this is hogging away all that material, you know, roughing away around my model. And let's unwrap this. And let me let me turn off this color also you can see so basically just like if you were working on a flat table you know it's did a rough cut you know hogging away all that material and stuff around the model now I've got a finish cut that I need to do
And so on the finish cut, uh, I'll use an eighth inch ball nose bit. Uh, I'm gonna use the model as the boundary because the rough cut, now here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. Now we could optimize the tool path and I'm gonna do it both ways uh, to show you the time length and everything, but I'm gonna use the same material as the boundary with my eighth inch bit here and that means my eighth inch bit is literally not only just working on the model part but it's also flattening out and removing the remaining forty thousandths of an inch material of this flat zone here and that is just a lot of wasted time so if i just calculated this normally with the material as the boundary with my eighth inch bit and i calculate this tool path um give it a second to calculate uh, that little eighth inch bit is going to be not only, you know, carving my model, but it's also going to be carving all these flat areas. And there's no sense in that. We can work that uh, by using a pocket cut around our model to bring the rest of this flat area down to the final surface of this model. And let this calculate so I can get into a, another screen and I will show you what I mean and I'll show you how much time is being saved by optimizing this toolpath by creating some additional vectors and all. And you can tell how long it's taking to calculate uh, and everything because you can see that progress, you know, bar at the bottom, barely moving. It's got to mill all of this flat stuff. And why, why do that? Why do we want to do that? While that's calculating, let's pop back over here and let's look at our table leg. I'm jumping back and forth, but I just want to, you know, uh, if we look at our table leg here and we have our finish cut. If I come in and we do our 3D finish cut, let's see how much I can really tax the... Uh, the post processor actually not too bad all right let's uh, stop that let me turn my preview down let's go to a standard preview and let's do that again let's make that a little bit faster zippity doo dah zippity -a. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. She's I'm moving along now. <laughs> now I'm gonna talk to you about this square block up here at the front and why we have those ridges and stuff because what that, that did for me uh, in my part was it gave me that square top of my table leg. And that's actually a model as well. Uh, if I did not want to round my cylinder off um, or if I had, if I did a rounding toolpath to true up my entire cylinder, and the top part of this leg was going to be square, like it is here for the table apron and stuff, then we actually have to create that model, uh, just like I did at the beginning here, unwrapping that vector to create a model based on that, and everything. You know, this would be the profile that gets swept between the two rails, so that way when it's wrapped up. It creates that square vector and all. Now I had my profile tool pass that I projected, those fluting tool pass that I projected, you know, to create those flutes on that table leg. You know, and because I projected the tool path, the quarter inch deep flute is the same distance, quarter inch deep, all the way through that taper. Had I not projected, then that would have started out as a quarter of an inch and it would have went to zero. My flute probably would have stopped right about here uh, because there was no more wood to, it would have just done a straight tool path, but it, it didn't and not follow the taper. So we got to follow that taper and all. We're going to come back and we're going to talk about wrapping this block to create that square block at the top. But um, I should be close to... Uh, being generated over here. <coughs> Excuse me.
Oh, you son of a gun. Did I did I stop the wrong I did. I stopped the wrong calculation, ladies and gentlemen. When I stopped the calculation a moment ago to turn down the view quality, I stopped I stopped the one that we were waiting on. Haha, <laughs> like an idiot. It wouldn't be me if I didn't screw up every once in a while. All right, let's go back. Uh, hello, Reginald. Thank you for joining us. All right. So we'll go ahead and let that calculate out uh, and, and everything. Uh, and while that calculates out, let's talk a little bit. I'm, I'm trying not to jump too... Woo! Try not to jump uh, too far. Uh, hold on, I'm getting... Uh, Alright, uh, Sam, on your text messages, uh, I will get back to those in a moment. Alright, let's see here. Alright, let's go ahead and delete that model there. So, notice on my model here that I did not have my profile running the full length of my cylinder because the... We come in here and let's uh, close this and let's get back to the model here. On my, you know, um, leg, my table leg, the top part of this leg is going to be for the apron, you know, and I, I can't have it round. I need those defined square corners. And the only way to create those square corners on that rounded cylinder, um, the uh, on that rounded cylinder, the is to create my diameter block here. And if we look at the block, if I go into my tools here, but -doo -doo, I've got my on my three and a quarter inch, uh, you know, piece here. I've got my three and a quarter inch uh, uh, block here. Well, in the Aspire software, I have what's called a vector unwrapper tool. And that vector unwrapper, here it unwraps uh, you know, the selected object, and basically it turns it into this, uh, we've got this kind of target, this bullseye here. And so it's saying, drag the center of the rotation directly into the 2D view, you know, or let it position using the options below. And I'm using the center of my contour. So basically, I'm showing the software by using the center of my contour. I'm showing the software where my cylinder falls within my square block. You know? And so um, I can go ahead and click apply to that. And it will create this vector here. Okay? Okay. And so I can close this tool. My, my little contour followed me when I clicked over that. I can close this tool. But it's created this vector. And so this vector uh, is getting going to be swept between this line here, the end of my stock, and this line here. These are going to be my drive rails at the top of my model. Now, I need... Uh, to have this vector rotated in a certain orientation depending on how I'm sweeping it uh, and everything. I need this vector to be swept uh, not from top to bottom, you know, which I have here. If I have these two vectors here, top to bottom, then I'm sweeping it vertically like this. But if I'm sweeping between this vector and this vector this way, then I need that horizontal to sweep between those two spans and stuff. So in my case, this was the one that I made earlier. I'm going to delete that. And with this vector, I'm going to use my top and bottom and make those my drive rails in the two rail sweep. And then my vector here is going to get swept between those two that model and now when we look in our 3d view you can see that we have this 
square block here, this component and everything. And mind you now, I have multiple components on this stuff. Whoa. Hold on a minute. Let's turn that one off. There we go. So this square block, those are my four corners of the square block that are put up like that. And these curves here are the flat. When this part gets wrapped, those flats become flat and then my corners become corners. Now, of course, mind you, my model is too thick. That model is too thick. So I need to go into the properties of that model and I need to reduce my shape height some oh not that much hit <laughs> a little bit more 1.375 I should just type it in However, however wide I need that, uh, let's go 375, but however wide I need that square block for my apron to be for that table leg, it all depends on, you know, my table leg and everything. And notice how it nicely transitions into the model, uh, how it nicely transitions into the model and everything for the table leg. So all of that stuff that I just did there and everything, creating that contoured profile, that, that, that tapered profile, creating all that. That's all Aspire. Uh, and so what we can do in Desktop and Pro is we can wrap models around a cylinder. We can V-carve. We can pocket cut. We can do all of these things. We can actually carve a 3D model and kind of create a statue type of carving and stuff. Um, we, can, we can do that within the softwares. But to create those tapers, so to create that square body at the top of the leg and all that, that is all Aspire. Um, you know, so you have to be mindful of what you can and can't do depending on the software that you have. So this model, you see it's still not finished calculating because that eighth inch bit has got all of that material to move, remove, and that's such a waste of time. That's going to be a long, long carving. So it's almost done. We're going to let it crawl up to the end. Uh, and um, while it's crawling there to the end and calculating, then we'll go in and create the proper vectors and do a pocket cut to reduce that time and stuff. But while that's happening, uh, let's go ahead and see if you guys and girls have any questions. Um, let's see here. I don't see any. If you have any questions, now's the time, uh, guys and girls. And uh, now's the time uh, to ask those questions. But... Um, Wrapping a model, wrapping a V carving like our Hello World text, uh, wrapping you know uh, I don't I don't care if this is uh, um, a a walking stick or whatever that is um, you know gonna have a, a a bear you know wrapped around the top of it and all that stuff. All of that uh, and everything, um, it's wrapping. So basically, you're, you're taking that object and you're wrapping it 360 degrees around. Uh, and um, whether it's wrapping around horizontally, you know, around the y-axis, in my case, like this model is wrapping around the y-axis, or if I turned it 90 degrees and it was just wrapping the top and the bottom, you know, instead of the two sides. It just depends on you know how you position it. There's not a whole lot to wrapping. Um, and one of the things that we can deal with, and now we're finished calculating, yay! Oh my goodness, I'm not even gonna run that. I'm just gonna look at the time because we're gonna run the other model uh, after it's optimized. But let's look at the time on that. 12 hours and 54 minutes. 12 hours and 54 minutes, um, you know, to do that that eighth inch bit along that whole cylinder. Ridiculous. Let's optimize that real quick. 
uh, but before I do, Mike's got a question here. How do you put a bend in a leg, a bend in the taper in the leg? Um, again, that would, my, Reginald, that would be in the Aspire software. And you would have to create the profile. You'd have to create the profile of that, you know, that bend. So right now, my particular profile is, you know, sweeping 90 degrees. The single profile here is sweeping 90 degrees all the way across. But if the top half of my profile is got, let's say, let me draw this in. Let's say this leg is kind of like a cor Corbell foot. Um, let me get my drawing tools here. Let's say if my leg has kind of a you know, bend, my front would most likely also follow that contour. It would never be flat like that. You know, it would be in the profile itself. So the ways that you can do that, and I'm not 100% expert on it, uh, but he's uh, looking at creating a, a like a Corbell type leg, uh, if I'm even saying it right, Corbel type leg. Let's go into the modeling here and let's turn off and this off. Turn that off. Let's get rid of these flutes. And let's take the uh, let's see if I got that wrapped around. The back side is going to be Uh, let's see here. That front side is most likely going to wrap. I'm going to have to, instead of sweeping the profile between these two, I'm going to have to create a vertical line here. Vertical line here. Let me get these two lines centered up on my material. And let me rotate this. Let me see here. No. Let me undo that. Uh, control Z, Control Z, Control Z. Uh, let's go. Two rail sweep. Uh, let's sweep between here and here. Oops. Between here and here. This guy there. Okay, let's take this vector and let's join those vectors with a straight line.
and select my model, select this vector here. Oops, keep holding the shift key there, Laney. And let's remove everything outside of the selected vector. Okay. What we're basically doing is we're creating, you know, it's only wrapping a certain distance. You see that there? You know, around the cylinder, it's only wrapping a certain distance. That's what I just, that's what I'm doing by removing that model. It's not wrapping the full 360 degrees. Now I've got to create the profile that's going to be the back part of this for that contour. And let's say, let's do it this way. Let's take this and let's mirror that. Kind of give me the illusion of that full leg table. And let's take a polyline. So ah. Come on, Lenny. This is not a Corbel leg, but I'm trying to somewhat simulate that. Flip this model. All right, and this guy, and this guy would be my two rail sweep. This profile would be my sweat profile. Sweeping along, sweeping along, sweeping along. And then with that model selected, that new component selected, and this vector, this time I'm going to move everything from within side. And that should create that curvature but of course my curvature all of this meat here on the side here is going to have to be removed to match that curve or my curve is going to have to be a little less bear with me a second that bad boy is I've got to give it some meat I've got to give it some meat so I need to extend Need to extend this. Let's go another three quarters of an inch. And same thing here. Let's extend this out. Three quarters of an inch. Oh, hummy dummy dum. Okay, one more time. Let's take that two rail sweep. I don't believe. VCAR Pro, you can import a Corabel leg that already has the curve in it. All right, let's see here. Two rail sweep. Use selection as the drive rails. This guy right here. 
uh, scale cross section between widths. Sweep between spans. Let that sweep out. Remove that material. Oh, I don't think it's going to blend. All right, so three quarter inch was too much. I got to find that happy transition. And let me see what we're looking at here. Yeah, so let me take my model, scale my model Z height. That's what the problem is. Properties, this component. Uh, 1.625. Sweet child of mine. I'm not going to get the transition I need in here. This is not a class on modeling, guys. Let me see here. Uh, I have to work on that one, Reginald. Uh, I've never drawn a Corbell leg, so I'd have to work on that to see how I get my two ends to transition together. Uh, as far as a walking stick uh, is concerned, um, this is not, it has nothing to do with wrapping a model, so I'll have to answer that question next week. We'll do, We'll do modeling next week, and I'll we'll we'll I'll have I'll cover all of this next week. So you have to join me then, um, and everything on how to model different legs and components and spindles and stuff, because that one is just going to take up too much time. I honestly don't know how to draw it, but uh, let me import. Let me show the guys and girls what you're referring to, or generally what you're referring to. Uh, let's see here. Where's my Seagate backup? Ballasters, 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 B. Uh, 
I keep calling it a Corbel. It's not a damn Corbel. It's a... Hold on a minute. Uh, what in the heck are those? Queen Anne. Do I have a Queen Anne leg? Give me a second, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. Let's turn off. The model is bigger than the block of shoe. You want to continue. So creating that curvature on that wrap model, let this kind of generate here. Creating that curvature, if we were to look at this model unwrapped, okay, you see all these curves and contours and you see this big void right here. That big void is that curve in that leg. These contours here and here are the contours on the back side of that leg. But this void, if we were to wrap this back up, this void, you know, we've got our, here's our toes and everything. And then we have this void right here. And then we have that contour back here and everything. When we unwrap this, there's the toes and all so you can see how that model was shaped and built just to get that you know imagine you know this void right here imagine these toes you know they're in line or they're wrapped to each other so imagine wrapping that cylinder up let me see if I can get it into uh, this view here when that cylinder wraps those toes line back up you know all the way around when it wraps around let it regenerate it's pixelated now but come on generate um when it wraps around you know you've got that big void here there's nothing there you know there's no meat when these when these toes wrap around to create that curvature you know, let's go from the side to create that big deep curve on the back side and then on the lower side and all when it's unwrapped you know it basically looks like a void in the model you know when it's unwrapped so creating that Corbell leg Reginald uh, you know it's gonna take it would take some time uh, working same thing with your walking stick you know wherever there's a high spot you know imagine if there's a curvature in your walking stick you know, um, you have a high spot and then you have lows. Where do those lows fall within this model? Where do the highs fall? That when this thing gets wrapped up, it creates that kind of S curve or uh, that wiggly shape or whatever the case may be. Cabriole leg. Thank you, Jim. I kept calling it a corbel, like a fireplace mantle corbel, but it's a cabriole I just wasn't spelling it out right. I was mumbling. Cabriole. Thank you, Jim. That was driving me nuts. Appreciate it, buddy. Cabriole. And so, 
you know, that's, that's to be able to do something like this, that's definitely an Aspire program. You're not going to be able to do this, uh, Reginald, in, uh, in VCAR Pro or Desktop, for sure. Because you've got to create those highs and lows, that curvature, so that, you know, those cavities, you can almost see the back shape here, you know, right down this, this leg, you can almost see that back shape. And then you can imagine when this thing gets wrapped around that that curvature is what's on that, you know, back part of that leg. You know what I mean? And they're, they're very hard to create from scratch. As you saw how I was doing, I'd have to go in and do some sculpting and all that. And I just, I'm not going to, I can't do it in this class. It's not, uh, it just takes uh, too long. Uh, but we, you know, we can, we can look at walking sticks and all that stuff uh, in another class, you know, for sure. Cause I'm not a, I'm not a, uh, let me switch back over. Um, to my full screen here for a second. I'm not, you know, uh, you know, walking sticks and everything. You know, I'm not a not a expert at them, but you know, uh, I could make them. But that's a whole nother class, ladies and gentlemen. That's a whole nother class. All right, let's get back over here. Whole nother class. So we'll have to visit that later. Um. All right, so wrapping a model. Let's get out of this. Let's close this this design here. Let's close that. I don't want to save any of that. All right, so I've got my 3D rough cut here, and I've got my 3D finish cut on this part. And what we were talking about was optimizing, optimizing our wrapped models and stuff. If we look back at that time, remember I said it's like, you know, with the rough cut, uh, you know, it's a 15-hour job, and that's 12 hours on just the finish cut. That eighth-inch bit is trying to mill all of that flat work and stuff. Well, we do not want to do that. Okay, we don't want to do that. What we want to do is we need to outline our model. Oops, do that either. We need to outline our model with vectors. So it creates the, you know, we have this little, looks like a blue spinning top on its side right here. Create vector boundaries around the selected component. And what that does is it creates our vector lines. These are our, you know, profile lines and things. And then we need to come in and we need to create a vector around our blank. And I'm going to offset this vector on the width here, not the length. I'm going to offset this vector. I'll do it on the length too. Uh, outward, let's go just a sixteenth of an inch. And that's going to let that bit clean up all those edges and everything and all. But what we're going to do is we need to know how thick this model is and where this new Z plane surface is at the bottom of the model. If we look at our setup here, our model Z plane is 1.8488. You know, uh, that's our Z plane. But our model thickness is 0.6512. Okay, 0.6512. Well, if we multiplied that 0.6512. Uh, before I talk out of my butt, let me do that real quick. Before I talk out of my caboose, let me do that real quick. Ah, point six five one two. Times two equals three. Yeah, no. Okay. So our model thickness is 0.6512. That's going to be our magic number uh, for the cylinder. And it's technically going to be this 1.844, uh, two and a half inches minus 1.844. So let me get that number as well. 
calculator. Two and a half, uh, my cylinder is five inches in diameter. The half, half diameter, half diameter, uh, which is our radius, is um, 2.5 inches, 2.5 inches. And I need to subtract that 1.8448 minus 1.8488 equals 0. 0.6512, okay? So that's our magic number for our pocket cut, 0. 0.6512. So let's go ahead and come into a pocket toolpath with our vector selected. And we're going to go 0.6512. Um, quarter inch in mill. Could probably do the larger area with a bigger end mill than the smaller areas with a quarter inch end mill. Yeah, let's... Uh, let me edit my passes here. I'm going to take an eighth of an inch per pass. It's going to make that uh, six passes. I want to let me optimize this a little bit, even a little bit more. Let me take this guy right here and ungroup him. Let me take this vector, this outside vector here. Let me offset this outward another oh let's go a quarter of an inch okay so I'm gonna take a larger end mill a half inch end mill and I'm going to pocket this area out with a half inch end mill Uh, let's calculate that. Okay, so on this pocket cut, it's going to remove all of that material. In three passes. There we go. And then on the vectors here, all of these guys, I'm going to change up the bit uh, and uh, let me turn off this outside vector. I'm going to change up the bit. Um, same depth of cut and everything, but I'm going to change it up to a smaller bit. I'll probably use a, a 3 16 inch end mill, quarter inch, eighth inch. But I just want, I'm looking at these small areas and all. So we'll calculate that out. Okay. Now on my finish cut, my 3D finish cut, I'm going to use the selected vectors as the boundary or the model as the boundary, right? One or the other. <coughs> and in my case, I'll use the selected vectors as a boundary. Um, just this, you know, this outside boundary here uh, with that eighth inch end mill and all, and I'll calculate that toolpath. Nope, 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 nope. Hold on. Selected vectors as a boundary, and I'll calculate that toolpath. You can see how much faster that, uh, you know, it's racing across now. And we're also going to change the rough cut out because we don't need the rough cut doing all the, what, all the work that the pocket just did. So we're going to end up changing the rough cut also. There we go. Um, and let's do that rough cut. Let's move this back into position. Oh. 
The rough cut, I'm going to use the selected vector as the boundary also with that same vector as the selected vector as the boundary. Calculate that. Okay, so now I've got my two pocket cuts. I've got my two pocket cuts that are going to do the major part of the load. Uh, so what you see here, the, the preview there, then my rough cut is going to come in and my rough cut is going to um, do the rough work on the model and all. And then I've got my finish cut here. Now you're going to notice at the top of the model here, um, we've got these two little nubs. We've got these two little nubs here and everything. And you also see around the outside of the model, you've got these little nubs and stuff here, right? That's where these two nubs up here, my half inch bit couldn't fit in there. There wasn't enough room. So when that when it did that pocket cut, if we look at this, uh, let's turn this up on its side and we look at that first pocket cut, you can see that there's no tool path there. The, the half inch bit could not fit in there uh, and stuff. And so the... Um, one thing that I could do is I could come back with my smaller quarter inch bit and clean up those two areas or I could let my finish bit here expand out a little bit past the model you know past this area here uh, and I could do that with my finish cut let's let that finish cut come out a half inch past the model let that calculate and let's see if that gets into this area here. I know it's going to get into this area and clean up those little nubs that were there. If that doesn't clean up those nubs, then I'll use my smaller pocket with my eighth inch bit. I'll draw two vectors around those areas there and there and I'll let my smaller quarter or eighth inch bit, quarter inch, three sixteenths, whatever that can fit in there, go in there. So, almost done. Okay, so you can see by letting that finish bit come out, uh, it was able to get out into those areas there. And the, so that will end up uh, cleaning all these little nubs and everything up. All those little nubs and everything up. Now let's look at our time and let's see if we've shaved any time off by off this toolpath. Um, so with the two pocket cuts, the rough cut and the finish, we brought it from 15 hours to 7 hours. So we've cut the time in half. We've taken that 12 hour finish cut and brought it down to 5 hours and 30 minutes. Um, you know, so optimizing the toolpath saves quite a bit of time. I mean, you know, we've uh, 15 and some change, we're down to 7. So we've basically taken off you know, uh, seven and a half hours by optimizing those tool paths and stuff. And all we did was we basically looked at the flat areas of our part that's not, you know, there's no sense in our small little eighth inch ball nose doing this model and having to surface all of this material. So we took and we drew a boundary around our material. We drew a boundary, a large boundary around our model and we used a large end mill, quarter inch, half inch, whatever, and I used a half inch to do all the major flat work, cutting down to the bottom of that model, that 6512. And then we used a smaller bit to kind of come in and do all the other little pockets, all these other little pieces of wood that would be sticking up, you know, and that cut 
Uh, you know, it takes about 30 minutes to, to clean up those areas and everything. And then we have our rough cut, which is going to take all of that roughing of the material of the model, just the model area within this boundary, and it's going to clean it up. And then our finish bit is just doing the finish work. Now, uh, the finish work, expanding it out to do that extra half inch around and everything added to that five hours. I could, um, I could let my second pocket cut here, um, let me see here, I could let my rough, 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 which would be faster. Let me see, my rough cut is 28 minutes. I could let my rough cut go past the boundary by that half inch. And the finish cut, I could not go past. Um, let me think about that for a minute before I say that. It should... Uh, I calculate that out that should that rough cut should clean up those two nubs and then my finish cut I don't need to let it offset past the line I can just let it focus on the model and if we look at the time, we've increased that 28 minute rough cut to 43 minutes. We've brought the five hour finish cut down to four hours and 21 minutes. So we're basically kind of just trading minutes there. And if we look at the overall cut, instead of seven minutes, 40 seconds, we're at six or seven hours, 40 seconds. We're at six hours, 46 minutes. Uh, geez, I'm getting tongue tied. Instead of seven hours and 40 minutes, we're at six hours and 46 minutes. So we shaved just an hour off. Uh, hour, so 90, uh, 56, 54 minutes we've shaved off, an extra 54 minutes. But we've optimized that toolpath. That's much better than a 15 hour run. You know, we've got some tool changes to do. I've got uh, three tool changes to do, but that three minute tool change is gonna save me seven to eight hours. Absolutely not a problem for me at all. So something to keep in mind when you're wrapping your models or when you're carving models in general, optimize those tool paths. You know, if you have flat regions, let your pocket cut do those flat regions. How to determine the depth of the pocket, your material setup, it'll show you your model thickness and your model Z plane. And since this is wrapped around, this is multiplied by two, uh, but it's 0. 0.6512. That's the depth of my pocket cut, you know? So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, any questions on anything regarding that? Um, we're going to take and add a little bit of uh, text in here. Take this text and get that. Somewhat centered. I'm gonna do a V-carve toolpath, zero start depth, no flat depth, 60 degree V-bit. Calculate that out, you know. Now, what didn't I do? What didn't I do? I didn't, I didn't project that V-carved toolpath. And remember, all of this material got milled away. The surface was way up here. So on the V-carved toolpath, I need to project it onto the 3D model. That brings it down to the new plane that was created. And now when I calculate, it will carve in that new plane to create our wrapped 
cylinder. So essentially wrapping a model, let's wrap this up. Speaking of wrapping, let's wrap this up. Uh, you know, you just gotta, you know, you're working in a flat plane. How do you want that model to wrap around the cylinder? You know, and all that stuff. Now, the one thing we didn't do in this is we did not create a roughing toolpath. We did not take our square blank to round. So let's pop back over real quick and do that because that's important. Because these rough cuts and pocket cuts, this is this is bringing this down from a finished cylinder, not from a square blank. You know, so I need to go up into my gadget library here and wrapping, and I need to create a rounding toolpath. And let's say my blank my square blank is going to be you know five inches or if I know the diameter if I'm using a round blank then you know five inches what have you but um, the five inches and I need to optimize my raster uh, you know in the cylinder what it basically does is it machines off the corners and then it comes up and trues up this part here uh, rounding it off you know uh, so it knocks off the corners first so I'm going to come in here and select my tool for that. I would generally uh, use a large diameter tool like my surfacing bit um, or my end mill. Where's my end mill? Where's my large end mill? Stand by. Right in front of your face, tiny. There you go. And calculate that out. Optimize raster strategy is not valid for round blanks. Uh, defaulting to raster. Oh, hold on a second. I don't want to default to raster. Let's delete that one. Let's come back in here. I needed this to be checked. And optimize that toolpath calculate that so if we look at this at the end oh heart attack um, oh man sorry guys chest pains the uh, if we look at this at the end um, what it does is it comes over and it knocks off the the corners first it'll knock off this corner rotate uh, you know, 45 degrees, knock off this corner, rotate, knock off this corner, rotate, knock off this corner. And once the corners are down to the cylinder, then it'll just start to clean up and, uh, you know, uh, round that cylinder off and everything. And you can see within my cylinder how close my model is, uh, you know, to that edge and everything. So from there, the model would be... You know, that's the high point of my model. This is the low point. This is the very low point. But all that material would get milled away during the pocket cut, rough cut, finish cut, and all that stuff. But our rounding toolpath, first toolpath in there, that does the optimized rounding. So you can see in the toolpaths and stuff, it's, it's coming up. Let's see if I can... Um, it's doing the high point of the corner, coming down next level, next level, and then it comes over here and does the same thing. Comes over here and does the same thing on all four corners, and then when it gets them down to the same level, gets those knocked off, then it comes and does the entire surface. And um, that's our rounding toolpath. So that takes our square blank to round, and then from there we have our pocket cuts, our rough cut, our finish cut and if you're doing v-carve you know your v-carve cut for those you know other tool paths to create that finished piece right oh right oh okay so so <coughs> Sylvia asks between tool changes where do you touch off you touch off in the center of your stock. Uh, the best place to touch off is uh, bring the bit down to the tail stock, the, the live center. 
the live center is uh, generally a one inch diameter live center. Well, I know it is on the digital wood carvers, but whatever the diameter is of your live center, you, you'd bring your bit down to and to the surface of that live center. Uh, and then in your controller software, you would type in 0.5, telling the software that you're half inch away from center, from zero, you know. So uh, that would be the way you would touch off your bits, uh, your Z. You'd bring it into a known distance in that live center. That live center, you know, that bit would come into that live center. And the edge of that outside edge of that one inch diameter live center half an inch is center of it, you know, where the center of our stock is. So we would program in our software 0.5 inches. And then we back off and run the job. So we're telling the software that the tip of the bit is a half inch away, 0.5 inches, from center, which is zero for us. And that would be, you know, the best place. Now, some... Uh, CNC's uh, like if you're uh, we we uh, on the digital wood carver we rotate our, our router 90 degrees uh, so the live center would be an ideal place for us um, on the guys and girls who carve from overhead on their CNC's that carve from overhead they could touch off on their touch plate or their tabletop or what have you and as long as they know the distance between that tabletop and the center of their stock, you know, their live centers and spur drives and stuff, then they can program that into their controller, you know, when they come and touch off, so they could touch off to that. Uh, we could touch off, you know, just a known area, and we could program it as long as we knew that distance, that distance and everything. Yep, yep. Ooh. Don't spill your soda. Not soda juice can't be drinking no soda no more all right everybody i don't know if this was helpful i don't know if the gentleman that was here last week that asked the question about uh wrapping a cylinder i don't know if this helped at all if he was if he's in class tonight um but i just wanted to briefly talk about wrapping models and wrapping text or wrapping you know a design or something that we're carving in you know around a cylinder and stuff uh, fourth axis modeling, uh, like walking sticks or table legs and things like that. We'll do that next week. Uh, that's a whole different class. It's completely different than wrapping a model. You know, wrapping, uh, is different from modeling. So wrapping, we're wrapping, you know, our, our 2d vectors, our 3d models. We're wrapping them around a cylinder on the surface of the cylinder, a walking stick, a table leg and all that's the actual cylinder. That's the model. So that's getting carved. So we are f tr doing a true 360 degree model. We're not taking a two and a half D model and wrapping it around the outside of a cylinder. So it's a completely different thing. It's a 100% different. So uh, we will cover that next week and stuff and all. Um, when we were uh, looking at the uh, uh, Spire software and, and you know that the table legs and stuff, just want to give you a general idea on that and uh, you know that software would be required if you want to do tapers if you want to do wiggly legs or or walking sticks or whatever the case may be um, all of those things uh, you know the aspire software would be required you know when we're working in desktop and pro and we're working on the rotary we're basically have a round cylinder uh, and we are wrapping objects around that cylinder to carve in and create we're not actually creating a 360 degree model carving like the table leg or or what have you now mind you that being said i don't want somebody thinking that they cannot import a table leg model into their vcar pro software they absolutely can so an example of that would be that uh that cabriole leg that you saw me bring in that stl model that you saw me bring in i can import that model into my vcar pro or my desktop and i can carve that model you know uh that that 3d model i can carve that table leg on my fourth axis 
That's not taking a two and a half D. That's a 360 degree model. That's a true 3D model, okay? That's not taking a two and a half D model and wrapping it. We're actually importing a 360, you know, 3D model into our vCard Pro or desktop and we're carving those layers. We can absolutely do that. But to be able to create that model from scratch and all, that's a spire. You know, you need a spire to do that. To, uh, you know, so I don't want you to, I don't want you to misunderstand wrapping an object around a cylinder and actually carving a 3D, 360 degree object. It's two different things. You know, we're importing that true model. All right, Kevin, good, great. Well, cause, uh, you know, um, good. I'm glad, Kevin, that you're here. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's 916, uh, another short night. Um, uh, these small classes and everything are great for me because especially right now I have a head cold. But um, uh, next week, I guess we'll, I guess we already kind of decided what we're doing. If you want to join me, uh, we're going to be strictly working in Aspire. Uh, it will not be. There will be no, no VCAR Pro included. Um, we're going to be working in Aspire, and we'll do some 3D modeling. And then after that, uh, the following week, uh, we'll get back to regular uh, how-to videos and all that stuff. And uh, uh, so everybody that's uh, you know that involves all Desktop Pro and Aspire. So, till next time, I'll see you soon. I want to thank you for joining us tonight on Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. If you're watching Spindle TV on YouTube, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. You can find out more information about our training and products by visiting us at www.digitalwoodcarver.com.